All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We've got some more of the frog this week. We're going to build up the gearbox. Well, here we go then, straight into it. Step seven, the spur gear. First, the kit comes with three different size spurs. Standard, high speed and torque. To go with those, there's three pinions and they're the typical Tamiya aluminium ones, which are good enough, but replacing them with brass or steel usually isn't a bad idea. We'll also need two 1150 bearings, which the kit does actually come with four of them, so they'll come in one of the Tamiya bags. There's the 18 tooth aluminium gear, and we'll also need the large C ring to hold all the bits together. In the grey bar, they list which pinions go with which spur. I'm going to start with the standard gearing, as I really don't have a good feel for how it's going to run. If we fit a warmer motor, we might need to change it to the torque gearing, but we'll have to wait and see. To build a spur, we need to insert the 18 tooth gear into the spur. There's a nice cross section that shows which way round all the bits need to go. To stop it falling apart, we fit the C-ring. Now it has a split that we use to start it by pressing it into the slot in the 18 tooth gear. Then we just run around the edge, pressing it in until the end pops over. Last bit is we need to pop a bearing in each side. But at the moment the bearings do tend to fall out, so try not to lose them. Step 8, the gearbox case and half the diff. First we need the main plastic diff gear one of the large bevel gears. Now there's two different ones, so make sure you get the right one. Despite looking at the diagram, I still managed to pick the wrong one. I did catch it though after a final check. We need the three small bevel gears, the last two 1150 bearings, two gearbox spacers, and two M3x8s. There's C16, the main bit of the gearbox, and it's hard to see, but there's small white nylon parts, B1 and two B2s. Lastly, we need one of the metal gearbox covers. They're marked L and R, and for this step, we need the right hand one. First little job is to press a bearing into the B2s, so they're ready to fit. We only need the one of them in this step, the other one gets fitted in step nine. The B2 fits in the large hole in the gearbox cover. It's got a tab and a notch, so you can't really get the position wrong. Just make sure you've got it on the right side. In the small hole near the middle, we pop in a B1, which will act as a support for the spur gear shaft. Now, it's not a bad idea to run some grease around the top of S2, just in case there's any rub on the bevel gear. It'll also help a bit with assembly, as it's going to keep the gear in place. This is where I noted I had the wrong gear. So a quick swap, and we can pop it over S2. Next, we have the small bevel gears that just drop into the main diff gear. We need to put a blob of grease at where the ends of the gears sit, partly to make sure we've got some lubrication, and partly so they don't drop out when we're assembling. The gears only fit one way round, so they just drop in. Before we offer the diff gear up to the bevel gear, we need yet more grease. A generous amount around the bevel gear does the job, then we just fit the diff gear on the top. Now you can't really use too much grease here, within reason of course. The excess is going to get flung off pretty quickly once you start running the buggy. Next, the plastic centre section drops onto the cover plate. Just try not to disturb the diff while fitting it. Then in the two hex shaped holes, we fit the two gearbox spacers. They go in smooth side down, and right now there's nothing to hold them in. We need to fit the two screws, but it's easier said than done. We need to hold everything together with one hand while doing up the screws with the other. It would be all too easy to drop something here, but as long as you take your time and use some care, it's quite doable. Step nine, bringing the gearbox together. This time we need all the bits that we've just put together. The odd bearing is the one from the other side of the spur gear. Not too surprisingly, it fell out, so I'm keeping it where I can see it. For screws and bits, we need three M3x25s, two M3x8s, three M3 nylon nuts, a 21mm shaft for the spur gear to run on, five spacers, the other large bevel gear, and the other gearbox cover plate. For plastic, all we need is another B1 for the end of the gear shaft, and the other B2 with its bearing. First then, we'll go around the edge and drop in the spacers. These ones aren't keyed, so their job is only to support the plastic when we tighten up the screws so nothing gets crushed. Next, we can pop the spur gear shaft onto its B1. 
Now before we put the bevel gear on, we'll apply some more grease just to stick everything together for assembly. For the spur gear, we need to slide on one of the bearings over the shaft. I found it easier this way rather than trying to offer up the gear with its bearing in. The metal parts of the spur gear need a generous coating of grease so it's all ready to fit. Pop the bevel gear onto the diff, then drop the spur in by the diff gear and over its bearing. It can be a bit tricky to get everything lined up. The important thing is to remember that it shouldn't take much force. When it's in just the right spot, it should almost fall into place. Apply some more grease to the back of the bevel gear, just in case there's any sort of rub. Pop in the bearing to the top of the spur, followed by a B1 on the end of the shaft. Pop B2 on the top of the bevel gear and make sure the tab is lined up with the gearbox cover then place the cover on the gearbox. It should sit neatly and flush. If it sticks up, then you've got something wrong. The three holes around the diff get the three long screws and nylock nuts, and the two holes at the front get the m 3 by 8s which is a bit strange given what happens in the next step, but there we go. The three long screws with their nuts need to be nipped up fairly tight. Remember, we've got a steel spacer in there, so we won't be distorting anything. The short screws though, well, don't worry about doing them up. Step 10, fitting the gearbox. This time we need two M3x30s, two M3x10s and two body mount screws. Now the body mount screws are just funky self tappers, so we'll pop them in first. They just thread into the holes on the side of the chassis and we want to screw them in so they bottom out. There's a nice cross section diagram that shows how they should fit. Next we can fit the gearbox. But first, we need to remove all four of the M3x8s. I suppose they're there to stop the spacers dropping out while assembling the gearbox. But a second pair really doesn't seem to be all that useful. Maybe for alignment of the cover plates, but that's pushing it a bit. Anyway, with all four of the short screws removed, we can offer up the gearbox to the chassis. Now in the top holes, we want the long screws. Initially, just thread them in enough to stop the gearbox falling off. And in the bottom holes, we want the shorter screws. Once all four are loosely in, go around and nip them up, plus an extra little tweak just to make sure. It's all a bit of an odd construction, but you can really see the beginnings of the modern gearbox. One thing for sure, it's nice having some more metalwork on show, rather than all that drab plastic we're used to seeing these days. Next, we have the drive shafts and the rear suspension, so I think that's going to have to wait for next week. It seems like a natural spot to break off. So I'm afraid that's going to be a bit of a shorter video this week. But as always, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a message if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!